after play goal it was. Well, it certainly was. And it's on a, they're killing penalty here, and the puck goes over to Caboose, and uh, he just makes a great pass over in front of Shalomov. And he, Lang came out, and he just pulled the puck right around, and what a goal. And the Czechoslovakian defenseman, Kadlitz, number eight, was back there, but there's no way he could uh, stop Shalomov. He picked up that pass from Kapustin at 9.32, and that was the game's first goal. Here we see it again, and he just pulls the puck around him, Shalomov, and Lang probably should have stayed in his net. He would have been, would have probably had a better chance at it. Made him try and deflect that puck around him. He tried to play with the goal stick. Here we see it again. See, him, see how great balance they have. They jump through the openings and stay on their feet. That's a, that's a sign of a real strong skater. And it was a big save in the period as well. Carl Lang, the Czechoslovakian goalie, made a great save here on Maltsev. Oh, watch Maltsev split the defense. Lang gets his glove hand up and catches the puck as he tries to go into the top corner. But there's another example of the great balance the Soviets and the European skaters have. They're very strong, powerful skaters. Here we watch it again. See Maltsev get through. Now we'll shoot it up to the top corner and Lang gets his glove hand up there. He's from the World Hockey Championships in Sweden. Welcome back to the Scandinavian Marina and the second period just underway between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. And the Soviets are leading by a score of one to nothing on a goal by Shalomov from Kapustin at 9.32 of the first period. Rutsov, Petrov, and Makarov, the forward line out there for the Soviets. Urbella is number 26 for Czechoslovakia. He's moving in front of the net there, but stop. Now Krutov comes out of his own zone, trying to get the pass to Makarov. Has a tone off in his own zone on defense. There's a drive, and that's wide as Franisak Chernik, number 14. Here's another opportunity, but he just failed to pick up that pass. Puck is cleared down into the Czechoslovakian zone, and back for it is Heidocek. And it's icing against the Soviets. That goal of the first period was a shorthanded uh, goal by the Soviet Union. I mean, just a super play. A two on one break, and Lang came out of his net. And Kapus threw that puck over, and uh, with just an outstanding goal, Shalmalov scoring. Great move on goaltender Lang. Kokromad at center now. Puck comes back to Dvorak, a shot. Michigan is in goal for the Soviets, and Carl Lang is the goaltender for Czechoslovakia. Vladimir Michigan, the Soviet goalie for this game. Veteran Tretiak is the backup, getting a well-deserved rest. Now back over the line, here's a drive. That's right on, taken by Kapustin. Carl Lang, the Czechoslovakian goalie. Schindel is the backup. Nikolai Makarov in his own zone. Now the pass, clear down the ice, and it'll be icing again against the Soviet Union. With the faceoff back into their zone to the left of Michigan. In the first period, Soviet Union out and shot Czechoslovakia 11 to 3. Not too many real good scoring opportunities at all for Czechoslovakia. Both teams at full strength. Novi, Eroslav Preacher, and Kozar, the forward line for Czechoslovakia. There's a shot, and Fritcher's drive was wide of goaltender Michigan. Now back come the Soviets. Drozdetsky over the line, and that's offside at the Czechoslovakian line. The Soviets have gone through the competition undefeated. One tie, and that was the 4-4 tie with Team Canada. And that was by far the best game so far here at the World Championship. Canada earlier today losing to Sweden by a score of 4-3. Now Czechoslovakia coming out of their own zone. This is Pozar, number 23, trying to get it in front to Preacher and chasing it down, Billy Oletnov. Billy Oletnov in his own zone. Now he passes up on that right wing side, Vladimir Golikov. It's slapped around the boards. Number 10 is Alexander Maltsev, and he can dance on skates. Offside. Two line pass, and we'll have more from the world. Soviets leading by a score of one to nothing on a goal by Shalomov, and the goal coming in the first period. Two teams at full strength. The puck rolls into the Czechoslovakian zone, a race for it there. Omatov almost caught up to it. Here's Luptov trying to get it in front, and that's blocked. And Aberman smothering the puck has it underneath him. The referee is Dag Olsen of Sweden. There's the Czechoslovakian coach, Bukac. 
He played in the Central Hockey League in Oklahoma City one year. Very friendly, outgoing personality. The Czechoslovakian coach, Bukac. Now there's a drive right on. Betisov shot was stopped by Carl Lang. In behind the net, the puck rolling in front. Now Martinets knocks it ahead. Haberman, number 25, back for Czechoslovakia on the left wing side. Watched by Fedosov, and Fedosov steals the puck, fires it around the boards. Sloptov slaps it over on that right side. Makarov going after it. Into the corner, he slips and falls, and Aberman brings it back for Czechoslovakia. Here's Aberman. Coming up with Rusnak, takes it into the corner. He's bumped there by Homotov. Scrambling for the puck, and it, the Soviets come up with possession. Pass to Zluktov, straight up the middle. He tried to get that pass to Skvortsev, and that just failed. This is Cadillac's number eight. Up over the line now, here's Chernik almost breaking in there on the right side, just failed to get that pass. Soviets come back in over the line, Krutov in front of the net, and the pass hits a skate and comes all the way back out to center ice. Gazatonov, number seven, on defense for the Soviets. Out there with Fedosov. Kalinka slips and falls at the center ice area, and the puck goes to Fedosov. Here's Fedosov. Pass up to Makarov, number 24. Good move there, moving in front. There's a shot, and that goes wide. Makarov didn't get a drive. He slipped and fell, but got the puck back to a teammate. Vladimir Petrov up to Makarov. Krutov moving in front. He couldn't get a shot. He was well covered. Ilyalepnov keeps the puck in. It bounces off the boards. Chernik goes after it there. Here's Chernik for Czechoslovakia. Alinka slapped away at it. And the Soviets get possession once again. Here comes Krutov moving in to Makarov. And the puck just bounced over his stick. one nothing for the Soviet Union here in the second period. Krutov dumps it in front. It's stopped at the line by Makarov. Bounces it into the left-hand side. Makarov, number 24 in front. Here's a chance now for Petrov. He couldn't get a shot. That drive by Kazatona. As they move the puck around with authority, finally Lang, bouncing it around, holds on. They went almost two and a half minutes without a face-off. And back to the action here at the Scandinavian Arena in Gothenburg, Sweden. The final game of the championships, Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. Richter trying to get it in front. He does a shot. They score. Kopraman scores for Czechoslovakia. Good play by Yuri Lala. Exciting young player for Czechoslovakia. Here we see it again. Kuperman lets it go and it gets underneath Bishkin. Pick it up again. Good goal by Kokomana. Good pass by Yuri Lala. Yuri Lala is uh, that's his 10 point in the in the world tournament. Seven goals and three assists. And what an exciting young hockey player he is. Kokomana gets the goal from Lala and Richter at 5:17. So it's a 1-1 tie here in period number two. The Soviets bring the puck back. Alexander Baltsev into the corner. Preacher gets there a stride ahead of him. Slapped it, but not out. That shot by Perbukin was knocked down, and here comes Czechoslovakia again. Orsava's shot, and that was just off the target. Another drive, and Michigan got his arm in the way of that one. As they start to open up now, here in period number two. Buck cleared off the board. Milan Novi, deep into his own zone. Novi chased back by Drozdetsky, number 15. Now the puck rolls into the Soviet zone. Michigan away out, slaps it off the boards. Novi goes after it there. Orsava let it go. Now Naliba chases it down, number three. Naliba trying to get it in front. Soviets get possession, though. Vladimir Golikov, a pass up on that right side. Maltsev is checked. And Czechoslovakia comes right back. Rusnak in over the line. Into the corner, Rusnak collides in the, uh, Czechoslo the Soviet zone, slipped and fell. And the Soviets get possession again. This is Maltsev. Alexander Maltsev, 33 years of age, had the puck knocked off his stick, and it comes over to Dvorak of Czechoslovakia. Dvorak 
straight up the middle. Number nine coming in with Rusnak and Aberman. Rusnak takes the puck, and then it was knocked outside the blue line, and they have to regroup. Martinez deflects the puck. It goes up over the boards and out of play. Both teams have such very strong skaters, real good skating. The Russian team has really had men on that puck that more opportunities up to this point, but it's been a fast, well-played hockey game. Shalomov has scored for the Soviets, and Kokromat has been the goal scorer for Czechoslovakia. Number 22 is Luktov out there with Homotov and Skvortsev. They forward line for the Soviets. Puck drop back to number seven. That's Kazatonov on defense with Fedosov, number two. Away goes Luktov. Oh, and he tried to get that pass over to Homotov, and that just failed. Loose puck at center, taken by Kazatonov. Up to Homotov, over the line, and he can't split through the defense. And Czechoslovakia's Halinka breaks away. Here's Halinka, number 21, coming in with Corbella. He takes the pass, a shot, and that's stopped by Mishkin. Fedosov back for the Soviets. Pass straight up the middle. Away goes Makarov up for the Soviets. Knocked against the boards. After it is Homotov into the corner. He's checked by Chernik. Puck is loose and and back to the action. That puck just cleared right through the crease and the goaltender lying last to stick. Gets it back as the Soviets get possession. Golikov a pass ahead to Maltsev. Here's Maltsev coming up over the line. And it's knocked away from him. And Martinet swinging out of his own zone. Back up over the Soviet line. He can't get a shot. Aberman goes after the puck. Martinet's trying to help him out. It's at the line and brought out to center ice. Maltsev, number 10, back for the Soviets. Maltsev trying to get it in front. He's bumped by number 24. That's Mishak. Knocks the puck with his skates. Dumped by the Czechoslovakian player Mishak. Soviets retaining possession. Now it's deflected and goes back into the Soviet zone. Fedosov, number two, winding up. Here's a pass right over the line. Fedosov in front, a shot. And that's stopped by Carl Lang. Almost caught on a line change. Krzysztofski walked right in. Good save by Lang, and he's been particularly sharp. Even in the first period when Maltsev split the defense, walked right in alone, and he came up with a glove save. Here's another shot on the... The action of Dodetsky's play. Back to Dodetsky and Lang gets over, hit the side of the net. But Lang has been extremely sharp the first two periods. And an air capacity crowd watching this game today. The total attendance for the games here in Gothenburg, 171,685. That's the attendance total for the World Championships, the game played in this area. Of course, the first few games were played in Stockholm. There's a drive by Catlett, so that's stopped by Michigan. Both teams at full strength. The puck in the Soviet zones. Luptov trying to get it out. Luptov with Homotov and Sportsev. The forward line for the Soviets. Aberman in the corner, left it for Fratisak Chernik. Chernik trying to get it to Halinka. He's knocked down. And Homotov, number 13, he's dumped at his own blue line. Carrying on, though, Up goes number 26, Sportsev. Dropped it back. Vasiliev keeps it in, in the corner. Now Chernik got a piece of it up to Halinka. He can't control it, though. The Soviets keep it right in there. This is Kortsev, number 26, in behind the Czechoslovakian net. Bumped by Chernik. Omatov then backhands it, and it's held there by Hydoschek, and then it's knocked away from him. Halinka for Czechoslovakia. He just decides to backhand it down the ice to get a line change. And the two Soviet players go back. It's touched by Vasiliev, and it's icing against Czechoslovakia. Golikov, Maltsev, and Drozdetsky, the forward line for the Soviets. Here late in period number two, a 1-1 tie. The puck shot into the Czechoslovakian zone. Hydoshek, number seven. He swings away there from Golikov. The pass comes... Over to the right side, Corbella has trouble as he's bumped by Maltsev. Now the pass up the middle, Halinka, number 21. Here's Halinka coming in for Czechoslovakia, trying to get that pass in front to Katletz, and it was knocked away. Chernik keeps it in, there's his shot. That was blocked, and it comes right back to Katletz. He shoots it, bounces off the boards and into the Czechoslovakian bench. 
three forwards and a defenseman from the Soviet Union were named to the all-star team today. And there's no doubt about it, Alexander Maltsev was one of them, and what a hockey player. He certainly is. Makarov and Kapustin were the other all-stars, and Vasiliev joining Robinson on defense. Lindmark of Sweden was the all-star goalie. Kokroman, number 22. Puck comes back to number five. That's Provukin of the Soviet Union. He let it go. Now it's cleared into the Czechoslovakian zone. Homatov goes after it there. Lala checks him. Richter, number 12, up the right wing side. He's checked right in front of the Soviet bench. Homatov, number 13, watch him move. Didn't split through the defense that time as he was checked by Meshack. Here's a chance now for Pervukin, a shot. And Lang stopped that. Lang has played well in this game, holding Czechoslovakia stride for stride with this powerful Soviet team. Now the puck is underneath Richter, and he makes sure it stays there with a faceoff coming up to the right of Carl Lang. Shot of the Soviet bench. That's Nikolai Makarov, number 18, 33 years of age, on defense for this game, replacing Babinov. So Petrov comes out there with Krutov, and the youngster Makarov, number 24, 5 foot 7, 23 years of age. There's Fedosov making a shot, bouncing puck in front. Makarov couldn't control it. Now Makarov drops it back to has a tone off and his shot goes over the top of the net. Fedosov, number two, he's bumped there. Pozar for Czechoslovakia. Pozar trying to come up the right side. Check by Makarov and it's Pervukin. Up over the line, here's a chance. Makarov knocked off stride. Pozar clears it out to number nine, Krutov. Krutov lost the puck, here's a chance. Right in on goal and there'll be a hooking penalty coming up. there was any doubt that was a hooking penalty. There's a penalty shot. Preacher was hauled down. Here's the penalty shot. Preacher going in against Michigan. Fakes. Oh, and he doesn't even get a shot away. Preacher does not even get a shot as he lost control of the puck on a penalty shot. Well, incidentally, that penalty shot was called. Here's the action on the penalty shot, but he beat himself. He tripped in front of his that before I got the puck away, but as he was going in on goal before, he was hooked, of course, and he, he almost flew. And there was no doubt about it. I guess he would have to call a penalty shot, but he had a little extra into that, that hook and infraction. So Freacher misses on the penalty shot, so it remains a 1-1 tie. Here in period number two, number 18 is Nikolai Makarov. He has trouble with it. Martinets tried to get it in front. Averman scoots after the puck. Now here's a chance, a shot. Oh, and that just sails right through the crease. As Czechoslovakia coming close again. And the Czechoslovakia player heading to the bench. He was solidly hit in front. Now Martinets. Now Michigan comes out of the net, slaps it around the boards. It's up to Kapustin. Kapustin coming to center. Kapustin, number eight, up over the line. Martinet's got a piece of him. Dvorak tries to clear it, and he does off the boards into the Soviet zone. And it'll be icing against Czechoslovakia. The injured player was young Rusnak for Czechoslovakia. He looked like he's hurt his shoulder. That penalty shot, of course, the second of the world championship in an earlier game. Dave Christian scored. For the United States on a penalty shot. Face off this time to the left of Carl Lang, the Czechoslovakian goaltender. Maltsev, Golikov, and Drozdetsky. Drozdetsky, number 15. This pass comes over to number eight, Cadlets. Cadlets, a long shot. That's kicked out by Michigan. Maltsev then backhands it outside the blue line to center. Corbella. Now it's slapped off the boards. Corbella racing into the Soviet zone for it. 
And it's called for icing as the pass originated from the Czechoslovakian side of the center red line. I don't recall another period that's gone so fast with very few whistles in the whole period. We're at the 1751 mark of the second well played period of hockey. Both teams are at full strength and they've split a pair of goals. Kokramont scoring for Czechoslovakia and Shalomov getting the goal in the first period for the Soviets. Heidocek trying to get it, does to Halinka. Halinka's pass up to Korbella and it's deflected down the ice into the Soviet zone. Number 14 is Chernik back there for it with Korbella. Chernik is upset and Korbella knocked off stride. Soviets coming right back again. Maltsev with Golikov and Drozdetsky. There's a penalty coming up as Maltsev is dumped. Slashing penalty to Maltsev. I mean, to Chernik on Maltsev. Chernik lost his helmet at the other end. Maltsev is favoring his hand. Here it is. He hooked in behind him. So Chernik off for slashing. 18-16, the time of the penalty. Alexander Maltsev, the leading scorer for the Soviet Union in the tournament with six goals and seven assists. Just been outstanding. He's really been something to watch all week. Here's where he lost his helmet at the other end, taking a stiff check. Then he came right back and he got caught and is penalized. So Petrov with Krutov and Makarov on this power play on defense. Kazatonov and Fedosov. Pass comes over to number nine, Krutov. Vladimir Krutov squeezed along the boards. Now Petrov will try it. Petrov drops it to number seven. That's Kazatonov back to Petrov. Backhands it to Kazatonov moving in front. Here's a chance and the puck is deflected and comes outside the line. Fedosov. And it's uh, called on a delayed whistle there. Puck was knocked down with a high stick. There's Maltsev being attended to. Here to take the stick right at the side of the head there in that collision. It was interesting the other day in the Soviet Canada game. Valery Vasilyov was cut under the chin and he wouldn't have his own doctor stitch him. He wanted the Canadian doctor to do the stitching. Of course, Team Canada with the entire medical staff here at the World Hockey Championships. Disappointing tournament really for Team Canada. Losing earlier today to Sweden by a score of 4-3. As Atonov gets the puck over to Petrov, we're into the final minute of period number two. And the Soviets here on the power play. Makarov, a good move coming in, drops it back to Krutov, another penalty coming up. Petrov shot, and that's stopped by Carl Lang. Krutov goes after it, a delayed penalty coming up to Czechoslovakia. Benesov passes into the corner to Makarov. Makarov without a helmet. It's on the ice. Makarov drops it back to Fedosov. A shot. That's blocked. Another drive. And that whistled wide off the stick of Petrov. Mishkin is on the bench for the extra attacker. This has been a delayed penalty for about 25 seconds now. Here comes Luktov. Luktov passes it back. Kazatonov up to the line. Brings it over now. Kazatonov. Passes in front, here's a shot, Fedosov, it's kicked out, Sluktov gets it again. Five seconds left in the period. Fedosov, a shot, that misses, and the period comes to an end, and there'll be a penalty coming up to Czechoslovakia. They already have 16 seconds remaining in the penalty. Up a pass up on that right side, away goes Makarov, he spins into the corner. Makarov, number 24, passed it back to the line, there's a shot by Fedosov. And that's blocked and comes all the way down the ice. Great defensive move by Katlich. What a young, good young hockey player he is. He'll be around for many years. Czechoslovakia, man short. Korpela still in the penalty box. Has 117 left in his minor penalty. Here's Makarov leaving the puck there for Kruchov. Gets it back again. Makarov, number 24, dropped it to Fedosov. Getting set a shot. Krutov's drive is blocked by goaltender Carl Lang. Now they get possession again. Chernik trying to cover Makarov. Makarov into the corner. Number 24 back to Fedosov in front. And that was knocked away. 
Petrov a shot over to Makarov, and that's deflected wide. The goalie stick is a way outside the line. Now we get a whistle, and there'll be an interference penalty coming up. That is definitely in the rule book. You cannot touch anybody else's equipment while it's laying on the ice. If you move it, it's an automatic penalty. Well, with the goal stick almost at the blue line, there you see it fly out. Now the Soviet player taps the goal stick, thus the penalty. And that's an interference penalty. Shot the goal stick out of the way. So Kazatonov in the penalty box for the Soviets. And Corbella has 45 seconds left in his minor. Reminder, at the conclusion of today's telecast, we'll be selecting the replay gum, two stars of this game. Now the puck is shot into the Soviet zone. Number 18 there is Nikolai Makarov. Cleared it out. Orsava brings it right back in. Orsava, number four, his shot bounced off Vasiliev. And it goes in behind the Soviet uh, net. Now comes up along the boards. Orsava tried to get it. And it's taken there by Viktor Shalimov. Pass straight up the middle. Now it comes over on the right side. The Soviets on the attack. Shapaliev. Now Kapustin goes after it. It's slapped, but not out. Stopped at the line. Makarov. Makarov, number 18, gets it there to number 19. That's Shalimov. And the Czechoslovakia team is back at full strength. Kazatonov still has a minute and three seconds left in his minor penalty. 1-1 tie here in period number three. Race for the puck. Golikov goes into the Czechoslovakian zone. He was bumped. Maltsev had it deflected off his stick. And ragging the puck there is the Soviet player Golikov, number 25. Now it's cleared off the boards into the Czechoslovakian zone. 37 seconds left in the penalty. And it's a two-line offside pass, so it'll come back inside the Soviet line. There's Kazatonov in the penalty box. 36 seconds left in his penalty. The early going of period number three. Mishkin, the goaltender, 26 years of age, as the Soviets give veteran Tretyak a well-deserved rest today. Ivan Halinka with Korbella and Chernik. There's a shot by Hajducek, knocked down, comes back outside the blue line. Czechoslovakia on the power play here. Halinka winding up in his own zone. Here comes big Ivan Halinka up over the line, can't squeeze through the defense, lost the puck, and the Soviets again shoot it down. Going back forward is number eight, Katlitz. In behind his own goal, he leaves it there. Now we'll see what happens on this power play opportunity as Chernik passes over to Halinka, his shot. And that was low and just wide. Comes back to Katlitz at center. Katlitz clears it in. The Soviets are back at full strength. And it was a van one tie here in period number three at the Scandinavian in Gothenburg, Sweden. Kazatonov, a pass straight up the middle, trying to get it there. And they race back for it, and it's icing called against the Soviets. And it's a pleasure to welcome to our broadcast location well-respected columnist from the Southern Chain, Jim Coleman. And Jim, nice to have you by here, and I'd like to comment from you on Canada's performance at the World Hockey Championships. Thank you, Bernie. It's nice to be here. I think it's raw, our performance was rather better than indicated by in the one and loss columns. And I thought that the 4-4 tie with the Soviets last Wednesday was the best game that I'd seen a Canadian team play against the Russians since 1976. It was really amazing, too, how they got up for that game against the Soviets and uh, had trouble today with a team like Sweden. Well, a little difficult getting emotional over this game today, Bernie. They had no possibility of getting a medal. I think the fact that they played it right down to the wire, it bears testimony to the fact that they gave an all-out performance when really there was no necessity for doing it. They were already eliminated before they went on the ice. Well, I'm sure all Canadians were proud of the team, especially in that Soviet game, and uh, they handled themselves remarkably well on and off the ice. A lot of frustrations because of the inconsistent officiating, but that's uh, something we have to live with. Yeah, we do, Bernie, and I've never seen a Canadian team in one of these foreign tournaments behave itself better than this one did. I was proud of them. Okay, Jim, thanks for dropping by. Jim Coleman of the Southern Chain. Always a pleasure to have Jim Coleman up here with us. It's a 1-1 tie here in period number three. 
as the Soviets get possession. Here's Kazatonov, a shot that's knocked down. He gets the puck again. Kazatonov, number seven, moving right in front, and that shot was knocked astray. Now Komatov, number 13, he's bumped against the boards by Richter. They scramble for possession in the corner. Sportsev goes in there after it. Now it comes around to Meshack. Meshack, a pass at center to Richter. Puck rolls into the corner. Oh, Kazatonov ran into the Czechoslovakian player Lala and knocked him heavily into the boards. Now here's Makarov, number 24, from the Central Red Army. Five foot seven, exciting forward with the Soviet team. He comes straight up the middle. Makarov to Krutov. Krutov, number nine, breaking for the net, a shot. Orshava got a piece of that and deflected it away. Now it comes back. Makarov, a drive from the point, and that was blocked. Krutov with Petrov and Makarov trying to get a scoring play going here, but play's broken up and the puck cleared out to center. Aberman, number 25 for Czechoslovakia, up over the line, then he's knocked down. The puck is underneath him. He bumps along the ice there with Nikolai Makarov, number 18. Makarov slowly getting up to his feet. He's injured. Now here comes Makarov, number 24. This is Sergei Makarov, the youngster, and the veteran Makarov heads for the bench, number 18, and he's in a lot of trouble. Here's a long shot by Horsava. That's kicked out by Mishkin. Two teams at full strength here in the third period. Makarov now coming in with Krutov and Petrov. Makarov right in front of the net, but he can't get a shot. Buck comes back, Billy Aletna. He gets it ahead to Petrov, number 16. Soviets trying to get a line change. Billy Aletnov on defense for the Soviets with Pervukin. Chernik was checked. Now the puck rolls into the corner. He tries to trap it there. Corbella the other side. He has it. Here's Corbella. But he can't get in front as it's uh, Chapalia clearing the puck down the ice. And this will be icing as Heidecek goes back and touches it. Czechoslovakia and the Soviets deadlock one apiece here in the third period. Makarov coming back now up with Krutov and Petrov. Over the line goes Petrov, but it's offside at the Czechoslovakian line. Another real good body check by Hajusek at the blue line. Caught him again. Now Chernik slaps the puck in. Hajducek, number seven, off the boards, trying to get it to Chernik at center ice. Kazatonov got a piece of him. Now it's dropped back to Fedosov, up to Krutov. Krutov misses a check there from Cadlets. But the puck goes in. Mishkin slaps away at it. Got a piece of the puck. Kazatonov passes right in front of his own net. Krutov up with Petrov. Can't get the pass over as Novi checked him. Kazatonov. Now he drops it over to Makarov. Makarov with great speed passes to Krutov on the right side. Trying to get it through the middle. Petrov in the corner behind the net to Makarov. Makarov bumped by Heidoshek. And Czechoslovakia gets possession again. Here comes Pozar, a pass intended on that right side for Catlett, just missed him. Fedosov clears it up to the line, has a tone off to Petrov, and he was stopped there by number 16, Miroslav Reacher. Mishkin away out of the net, leaves the puck there for Fedosov. He slaps it around the boards for number 19, that's Shalomov, and it rolls down the ice into the Czechoslovakian zone, Naliba. He lost it, comes around the boards, kept in by the Soviets at the blue line. Here's a shot, and that's blocked by Carl Lang. A good scoring opportunity by Chapalia. Kokraman gets the puck to the Soviet line. Mozar back to Kokraman, then he's checked. Vasiliev takes it up to center. Naliba breaks that up, and the puck goes to Kokraman. Off the boards to Naliba, but Kapustin has it there. Here's Kapustin dropping it into the corner to Vasiliev. Vasiliev, a lead pass. Shalomov up on that left side. Shalomov coming in with Shapaliev. And it rolled away from him. Now Vasiliev deep into his own zone again. Puck comes to the blue line. Halinka goes in and it's called on a delayed offside.
entertaining game, the final game of the 81 World Hockey Championship. And there's a shot that Michigan had a little trouble with, John, but smothered it quickly. He came out, too, to cut down the angle. That shot was shot from the other side of the blue line. Checkers of acting has played a real strong game. There's the shot again. He, he was out, way out from his crease. He was a little careless earlier, swinging his goal stick at a puck. He's going to lose it one of these days. Now Maltsev is bumped there by Richter, number 12. Puck comes in behind the net. Taken by Maltsev, number 10. He's bumped against the boards by Richter. Billy Aletinov, number 14. For the Soviets. Pass straight up the middle to Maltsev. Here's Maltsev. He couldn't get over the line as he was stopped. Linka backhands the puck into the Soviet zone. Back after it there is Pervukin. Pervukin gets a pass up on the right side. Golikov. He's inside the line. That'll be offside just as Drozdetsky brings it in over the line. Well, there are many uh, scouts and general managers representing National Hockey League teams here at the championships. The chief scout of the Edmonton Oilers, Barry Fraser, has dropped by our booth. And uh, Barry, I know you've seen two games every day, a lot of uh, hockey action. And I guess there are a lot of promising players in uh, Sweden and Finland, especially that NHL teams are looking at. There certainly is, Bernie, and you have to be impressed with their puck control and uh, their ability to do things in, in very small areas. It's been a great tournament, and uh, it's nice to see these young players come up through the ranks as they have on all these teams. And it's just amazing, you know, you sit back and watch a game like this and uh, the great talents, uh, we all know how great the Soviets are and Czechoslovakia, but it's a real pleasure to watch this type of a hockey game. It certainly is, and you see those young fellows come up like the Krutovs and the Makarovs, they're young 22, 23-year-old players, and uh, it just shows that uh, their system isn't uh, going dry by any means either, and uh, it's horrible, with, uh, especially in the second half of the season, and uh, it looks good for the future, and we can build on that, and uh, hopefully we'll move up in the standings and be a contender. Okay, thanks very much, Barry Fraser, the chief scout of Edmonton Oilers, for dropping by. And we're in the final minutes of the third period here, a 1-1 tie between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. There's a drive by Kokramat right on, and that's gloved by goaltender Mishkin, and he holds on to it. Offside pass to Petrov, number 16, 34 years of age. Petrov has been with the national team since 1968. Just a little bit offside, only three minutes left in the game. I know Czechoslovakia want to preserve that at least a 1-1 tie. They'd be a pretty happy hockey club to tie the champions. The Soviets have won the gold medal. No one can catch them, regardless of what happens in this game. And Sweden has won the silver, with the bronze going to Czechoslovakia. Canada finishing fourth after losing to Sweden today, 4-3. Face-off now comes outside the Soviet line. Taken there by Makarov, number 24. Makarov goes deep into his own zone. Makarov with Petrov and Krutov. Swinging at the center ice area, slaps the puck off the boards, goes in quickly after it, then he's knocked off stride. And Czechoslovakia just shoots it off the boards, down the ice into the Soviet zone. Back after it there is Nikolai Makarov. 33-year-old defenseman slaps it up along the left side to Makarov, number 24, in front. Kapustin can't get a shot as he was well covered. Back comes Czechoslovakia. Here's Fritscher on the left side, but he couldn't catch up to the pass as Valerie Vasiliev got there first. Preacher doing some forechecking in the Soviet zone. Puck rolls down the ice, going after it there is Mishak. Icing is waved off. Now it's slapped off the boards, comes almost to the blue line, then knocked back in over the boards, out of play. Just a little bit over two minutes to play. This has been a superbly played hockey game. Both clubs have not been caught out of position. There hasn't really been any two-on-one situations at all outside of the first period. It's just been an outstanding hockey game. Augers well for the Canada Cup coming up this summer. The Czechs are already preparing for the Canada Cup. They were telling us that they'll take a couple of weeks off after the World Championships here. They open their training camp in May to get ready for the Canada Cup. They've been asking for dimensions of all the Canadian rinks. They want details on the size, the capacity. 
So they're obviously uh, getting ready, very concerned about the Canada Cup, and uh, we're all looking forward to that, John. With their preparation for the World Championships here in Gothenburg, the Czechoslovakian team put in 1,000 hours of preparation. And Team Canada's preparation was eight hours the flight over. <laughs> yes, it was, but, you know, we... It's been a real experience, a real good experience uh, playing hockey in Europe. You learn something every day about this game. That's been the key to the success of the Russians. They never stop learning. And that's the same with most pros. And they are pros, let's face it. Well, they certainly are. They're very well skilled. They take passes in their skates. And Here comes Shalomov back in for the Soviets. He couldn't get a shot. Corbella knocked the Soviet player off stride. Richter, a pass up on that right side, and Corbella just failed to get that. Marvukin, Malenka is after him. Gets a little help from Kapustin. He can't get the puck out, though. And Billy Letnov, number 14, back into his own zone. As Czechoslovakia changes on the fly, and they've been tying up the Soviets, doing a good job staying right on top of them. That's the way Team Canada played against the Soviets in the 4-4 tie. Well, the referee blew the whistle, I guess. The delay they weren't of game. Advancing, the, advancing the puck. Here's Maltsev going after the puck. Drops it behind the net to Kazatonov. Dvorak couldn't trap it at the blue line, and he has to go back to his own blue line to get it. And he's knocked off stride. The puck comes up on the left wing. Kokromat had it momentarily. Aberman goes after it. Maltsev deflects it into the Czechoslovakian zone, where Martinets just backhands it up over the glass and out of play. 30 seconds left in the hockey game. And they'll drop the puck into the Soviet zone there. Referee is Dag Olson of Sweden. Demers, one of the linesmen, the USA linesman, and Viking, the linesman there, is from Sweden. Final 30 seconds of the third period and the game. Well-played hockey game between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. Maltsev, Golikov, and Nikolai Drozdetsky. As the defenseman, Kazatonov, drops back to his own zone and backhands it off the boards. Orsava races in, but it's offside at the Czechoslovakian line. And they'll drop the puck almost at the center ice area. Number 25 is Golikov. Played in... The 79 Challenge Cup, as did most of the Soviet players. Kazatonov in behind his own zone. Coming up to the blue line, it's stopped there at center by number eight, Katletz. He shoots it. Knocked down by Golikov with five seconds left, and they hold it right in front of the penalty box there with five seconds showing on the clock. So the Soviets, for the second time in the tournament, Involved in a tie hockey game. Someone threw a ball on the ice, so that delays it a few seconds. Now we're ready to go. Alinka against number 25, Golikov. It dropped back into the Czechoslovakian zone. Horsava off the boards as the siren goes to end the third period and the game. And the final score, Czechoslovakia won and the Soviet Union won. Jake at center ice. The two stars of today's game are selected by our telecast crew for lifesavers, makers of replay gum and suppliers to Team Canada, are Fedosov of the Soviet Union and the Czechoslovakian goalie, Lang. So on behalf of John Ferguson and our entire CTV sports crew, this is Bernie Pascal saying so long from the Scandinavian Marina in Gothenburg, Sweden. <laughs>